Here's my top 10 list of features so you can get the most out of AVD. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Let's kick it off with the quick start. This feature is baked right into the Azure portal and will deploy a fully functional virtual desktop environment for you so that you can kick the tires and start learning. All you have to do is click the start button right over there, answer a few questions, and in about 30 minutes, you'll have a fully functional environment, including FS Logics configured with Active Directory authentication. So this is a great tool to help you get started and learning about Azure Virtual Desktop. So if you're new, it's worth your time to check it out. Once you have an environment, we want it to run as optimally as possible. And for me, that starts with the RDP short path. The standard way of getting your clients connected to your session host is something called Reverse Connect. Once authentication to Azure Active Directory is complete, your client will present your token to the Gateway service, and the Gateway will find an available session host that can run your workload. Then an outbound connection is established back to your client, and this is all done over port 443 with certificates and TLS, and it's all very secure. RDP Short Path does this a little bit differently. Once you communicate with the gateway and a session host has been found for your workload, your client will be able to connect directly to the session host. You can even do traffic shaping with QoS. As of today, the generally available way to do this is through a hybrid network. So your clients have to be connected over your express route or VPN. This communication is done over the UDP protocol on port 3390. UDP is much more efficient than TCP and is more well suited for this kind of traffic. So it performs at lower latency like you can see right here. So take a look at RDP short path and create a better user experience today. What list of favorites would be complete without talking about support for Windows 11? Now I'm sure that you've all heard by now that Microsoft wants Windows 11 to be the most secure OS that it's ever made. To do this, there are certain hardware security requirements like having a TPM 2.0 chip and secure boot. Now this isn't just for show or to randomly induce change. The nastiest kind of computer attacks are ransomware based. Ransomware functions by creeping its way into your bootloader. And that's a little tiny piece of code that makes everything else start up. Once this happens, it's all over but the crying. A TPM module and secure boot will sign your bootloader so only the things that should be running are there and you're protected from these kind of boot kits. And if you're thinking about buying a new computer, you should know to ask to look for these features so you can run Windows 11 securely. But what about Azure? Well, this is baked right in with a feature called Trusted Launch. Trusted Launch is built on top of Gen 2 virtual machines where you have access to TPM modules and secure boot. And if you aren't quite ready yet for Windows 11, no worries, Trusted Launch will work on Windows 10 as well. Implementing Trusted Launch on Windows 10 or Windows 11 for Azure Virtual Desktop could not be simpler. Here in the host pool build experience, you fill out the first page as always with the standard stuff, subscription, resource group, name of your pool, what region you're in, what kind of validation you're using, the pool type, the load balancer, and your max session limits. Then you click next to add your session host VMs. You can change the add Azure VMs to yes, and then near the bottom of the page, you can see right over there, a security type. By default, this is set to standard. If you click the drop-down list, you can select Trusted Launch and then check the boxes to enable Secure Boot and enable VTPM. Complete the rest of the process and now you're running Virtual Desktop in the more secure way to protect your systems from those nasty boot kits and root kits. Speaking of things that'll make your virtual desktop experience in the cloud way more awesome, let's talk about Azure AD Join. This is a total game changer. Being able to move from a high cost, traditional type infrastructure that took a lot of time to deploy and configure and maintain to a cloud solution that just works is what Azure is all about. Azure AD Join for Virtual Desktop is what will allow you to cloud join your session host so we no longer need those old domain controllers. And that's going to simplify things a lot, but it's not without its growing pains. One of those growing pains is that Azure Virtual Desktop and FS Logic have relied on Active Directory for authentication, specifically Kerberos. 
and the journey of a thousand miles does begin with a single step, and it was recently announced that Kerberos has now been implemented through Azure Active Directory and addresses some of those old Kerberos issues, making it a great cloud feature. And Azure Virtual Desktop, specifically talking about FS Logics here, can take advantage of this in your Azure file shares. Now, as of today, Azure AD Join is fully supported for your personal host pools with local user profiles or pooled host pools that are used as jump hosts or other pooled environments where you don't need to save data on the virtual machines. And since Azure AD Kerberos authentication is in preview right now, Azure Virtual Desktop supporting this is also in preview. One of the key things in this scenario is that you need to ensure that your user accounts in Azure AD are hybrid user identities. That means that they have been created in Active Directory and they're synced into Azure AD. So this phased rollout of Azure AD Join will continue. So I suggest you start getting familiar with all of it now because a 100% cloud implementation of virtual desktop is a game changer. Another game changer is MSIX App Attach. This enables you to package and mount your applications onto your session host, which means that they don't get installed. And that's going to keep your images thinner. And since those applications aren't inside your image, they can be patched and version controlled separately, which allows you to push more frequent updates. Now, implementing this is baked right into the Azure portal as well as many third-party solutions. And along with FS Logix, MSIX App Attach decouples everything from the session host, which basically makes them disposable. And this is going to change how you look at your deployments, monthly patching, and disaster recovery. So definitely keep an eye on this feature. Now, the next two features I wanna talk about together because they are very closely related, and that is Start VM on Connect and Autoscale. And the idea here is to be able to reduce the cost of your virtual desktop environment by deallocating your session host when they aren't needed. But the beauty of all this is that it gives your users the ability to log on anytime they need to, and a system can be started up in just a few minutes. Now to get the most out of this feature, I suggest that you combine it with Active Directory Group Policy or Microsoft Endpoint Manager Policies. Here's a few that I like to use. The first one is actually a group of four policies that all work together. And to sum it up, I basically enable a screensaver policy that is password protected and locked so it cannot be changed. Now, why would virtual desktop need a screensaver? Well, if your connection is idle for too long, that could be because a user has stepped away. And that means you could have an unlocked computer out there somewhere in the world. Forcing a screensaver with a password will lock that screen and the user will have to put in their password to get back in. And security is always a best practice. Next, I have a policy that takes users who have been idle for too long and disconnects them. Their session will still be on the session host and to get reconnected, they just click their icon and log back in. Now, once they're really disconnected, the final policy will take place here and that is to log off disconnected users. Now, we all know that one user who keeps closing the RDP window instead of logging off things properly, and this is gonna help fix that. Once all of those idle users are disconnected, you've now made room on your host for more users or any maintenance that you need to do, and that would include things like auto scale that will deallocate your VMs so you can reduce costs. Teams AV redirection has been around for a while now, and it has a new friend called multimedia redirection. And the principle here is to reduce the network latency in any of your audio video experiences and also reduce the required bandwidth for your users, which will help save costs. And this all works by redirecting the AV stream in a Teams call, or in the case of multimedia redirection, from the videos playing in your web browsers. On the team side, there are several steps to get this all working properly, but I've made it super simple and there's a PowerShell script in my public GitHub repo that will install and configure everything for you so that Teams with AV redirection will just work. Once you run the script, reboot and you're good to go. As for multimedia redirection, you basically need two things here, a registry key on your virtual desktop clients and a browser extension on your session hosts. Once configured, the video stream played on the session host is redirected through your virtual desktop client and the processing all happens locally. And that's going to reduce the latency, as I said, and also cut down on the CPU overhead on your session host. 
and all this will help to lower your bandwidth consumption, which saves cost. Now we have several methods in Virtual Desktop to protect your data. And the first way is through the RDP properties. Here you can block users' access to clipboards, printers, USB devices, or disk redirection from their local computers into the virtual desktop environment. And that's all great, but a user can still take a screenshot. So the details of this feature are all in the name, Screen Capture Protection. Using policies, you can prevent the screen of your virtual desktop session from being copied. And this is very cool because it also blocks malicious software from doing screen grabs as well. The last one on our list is not directly a virtual desktop feature, but I think it is critical to your success, and that is the Azure Image Builder. This service takes creating and updating your images from an on-prem or manual process and automates it through a cloud service. This is all done through an ARM template. Just tell Image Builder what your source OS is, and yes, it can be a custom OS image as well, so you can pipe this into your monthly imaging servicing. Next, you tell it the scripts for all of your customizations, and these can change the look of feel of your OS or install software. For example, the Teams with AV redirection script I mentioned earlier is baked right into this process. And there is no limit to the number of customizations you can do. After that, you can store your image in an Azure Compute Gallery. And this will allow you to create multiple replicas of that image, which is needed to scale your Azure Virtual Desktop deployments. And you can also replicate those images to other Azure regions, which not only helps you to scale out and manage only one image in your environment, but also helps keep you safe during a disaster. And there's a video for every one of these features over on the Azure Academy, or you can just click right over there to see the compilation of all of them together. Thanks for joining me for this session, and I will catch you in the next one. Happy learning.